Hey everyone, today we're going to be modeling and printing some gem clusters for my D&D game. So you know what that means. We're going in caves. If you're my players, you're going in caves. You've been in caves. We've been in caves. We're still going to be in caves, but now you're going to be able to see the gem clusters instead of only a white plane of imagination. I've kind of been on a cave-themed modeling spree recently, so there's going to be more cave things coming up. Maybe some walls. Maybe a tree or two, too. You know, like you could enter out into an opening, hole in the ceiling, light shafts, sparkling crystals, big deciduous trees. I don't know, we'll see where it goes. So to start with, I'm going to open up my base dot blend, which you can get up on our Patreon. But if you'd rather make it for yourself, you can do what I did and copy MZ4250. I just downloaded one of his models off of his Patreon and copied its base. It's perfect 25 millimeters or about an inch. He also has a Shapeways storefront where you can make an account and download all of his amazing models for free. You can also page through his endless Patreon of amazing models. And for that, I would like to thank him very much. This is amazing. This is an amazing resource. I hope everybody loves this, because they should. So now that we got our base, I'm going to add a few cylinders of differing vertice counts. Vertex counts. Vertice counts? Vertex counts. There's going to be a 3, a 5, and a 7, just to give us a little bit of variance between the couple of gem clusters I'm going to put in. And then simply, I'm going to extrude the top face and merge it at center. And if you want to make it pokier or flatter, you can just, you know, move that top vertex along the Z, and you can scale the bottom face to kind of give it that crystal shape. It's, they're pretty quick to make. I say that, but it took me like 45 minutes to do this. <laughs> it was horrible. I'm so bad at this. Now I'm going to move them all out of the way, and I'm going to add another cylinder to kind of make our rock pile. I'm going to turn this one's geometry way up, and just set it to an arbitrarily kind of large number. 64 sounds good to me. Now I'm just going to scale it up, kind of extrude out a couple faces, and get it kind of into a dome shape to be our rock cluster. Once I got it kind of the way I wanted it, I'm going to go over to sculpt mode. I meant to hit the sculpting tab, but instead I went from layout to the modeling tab and then did all of the sculpting in the modeling tab. So there is a like a cleaner way. The sculpting tab's kind of all set up to do this, but you know, I've been doing this for like four weeks. Give me a break. So I started by remeshing it at 0.05. I'm not entirely sure the reason for 0.05, but it definitely gives you more geometry to work with, and it works. I did notice that when using the draw tool this time, typically it would be not as sharp as it was. I think maybe I didn't have enough like edge loops on the cone, and everything, as you can see where those main edge loops were where I extruded it, it got really sharp. I kind of talked about this in the egg, modeling but th that's why it looks like that i'm not 100 percent sure why it does that but uh more edge loops to begin with i guess kind of solves that it looks like a, a rock cluster though so i'm pretty happy with the way it turned out just a serendipitous mistake now i'm going to duplicate a lot of these crystals into clusters of like you know a couple resize and kind of just shape them to be unique to themselves. And once I'm happy with the tiny cluster, I'm just gonna jam it into the, the rock pile sculpt. This works. It's crazy that this is just all it takes to make models for 3D printing. It prints just fine. It's nuts. I'm so surprised at how actually easy this is. I know I'm not doing anything super complicated. I'm just like making like piles of rock and crystals but they come out looking really cool. Like, I, and it, 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 it took me a lot longer than I want to admit to make this, but I made a thing and I printed it. And I'm just, I'm still, like, I'm obsessed with this. It's, <laughs> I'm so surprised at how easy it actually is. So once you feel like you're done, save it and export it as an STL. And then open up Chidu Box and just import the STL. There's our model. Now it's blue. I've always had the best luck printing models at about 50 degrees. This means that each individual slice is pretty thin when printing. So essentially, a 3D resin printer prints stuff 
by cutting this model into like pieces of paper and then it like prints individual layers. 50 degrees seems to be the best so that there isn't a huge amount sitting on top of the FEP or the film at the bottom of the vat at each individual layer, which means that none of your models end up stuck to the bottom of the printing vat or falling off. That can also be an issue with exposure times if you're dealing with a lot of those type of things. Uh, make sure your exposure time is high enough. When I first started, I was like, get those models out, right? And I didn't even understand what exposure time was. So I was just like, yeah, I want to print it as fast as possible. So I just looked up how to like, how to print models quickly. They're like, drop your exposure time if you're effing crazy. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I am. And they did not turn out for a while. So they took about five and a half hours to print, only two of them. But you know, it's worth it to have prints that come out at the end, otherwise you're just waste and resin. An important thing to remember while supporting is to make sure that you get everything that's an overhang supported. Chitu Box will also show you if there are any unsupported overhangs with these little tiny white squares. You just throw extra supports in there. There's a whole bunch of supporting options. Depending on your exposure time, any one of these may be the best option for you. Play around with it. It might take a couple times of printing the same model before you really get a handle on it. You want a couple extra on the base as well because that's going to be a heavier area so that it doesn't detach from the build plate. Also another thing is I like these shoes down at the bottom. They kind of help make it stick to the build plate and they also take out a lot of the weird bubbles. If you've just recently shaken up your resin before printing, the shoe will take it all, all those weird little occlusions out for you. It's nice. And if you just really, really want that model to print and you want to go crazy fast like I did, you can throw in a billion extra supports. You're going to burn through your resin like mad. I went through a bottle on like 20 models, <laughs> which is not good. It, the outcome was not good, but I did get a couple actually usable people out of that. It just was a lot of support cleaning. I was at that with a file for days. And here are our crystals printing. They came out really, really nice. They took five and a half hours. It's, it is a long process. The resin does have a bit of a smell to it. So you're definitely gonna want an open space to do this in. I have it set up in my kitchen overnight when nobody's gonna be in there. And uh, in the morning, I'll just be like, open the door, wave a rug in front of it for like five minutes and the, the smell's gone. It's not too bad, but it's too bad to do in like your bedroom. And here's our beautiful finished crystals. I'm pretty excited with these. They actually look pretty neat. I'm thinking maybe even to grab some clear resin at some point and print them again in that because that could be really neat looking. I'm wondering if I can like put little bubbles inside of it so they look hollow. If I do that, I will update the STLs and let you guys know. 3D printing's crazy. I love 3D printing. It is amazing. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you want any of these models, STLs, the base, I got some eggs up there, our Patreon. Go check it out. Thank you again. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye.